one of the commonest problems, in fact perhaps the commonest problem people have with their dogs is the inability of the dog to walk nicely on the lead. Now this can have significant unexpected consequences and these unexpected consequences are if the dog does not have an appropriate exercise routine it has nothing to do and if it spends 23 and a half hours 23 and three quarter hours 24 hours a day locked up in a house it's going to be bored witless and this frustration through boredom is one of the commonest problems I have to deal with and no matter how many times I tell people they think it's something really significant and it isn't the dog is not being walked now I can understand that if you can't walk your dog on the lead it's uncomfortable and not pleasant to take the dog for a walk but the reason the dog doesn't walk properly on the lead is because you haven't taught it you haven't taught it how to do it and if you haven't taught it how to do it you can't expect it to do it now what the, the what I use at the school is I try and teach people to understand that the dog does not know how to release the pressure associated with the collar and lead it doesn't know how to do it so it constantly pulls against the collar and lead but once you once you've taught your dog how to release that pressure the dog will understand and comply and I, I've got Indy here with me today and I'm going to show you how sensitive he is to leash pressure and how he knows how to reduce the amount of pressure on the lead so I simply have to apply the slightest amount of pressure on this lead and he will the slightest amount of pressure when he feels the lead beginning to tighten up around his neck he'll move back he'll move back because he knows how to turn the pressure off and this is one of the principles I base my lead work training on so what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you for the next few minutes several other techniques that I use to teach people how to teach their dog to walk nicely on the lead. Whatever you want to teach your dog has to be achieved through motivation. If your dog's not motivated to engage, it won't be motivated to learn. Dogs don't make conscious decisions to learn or not learn. They're learning behaviours every day. Unfortunately, these behaviours can be appropriate or inappropriate. However, dogs do make conscious decisions to listen or not listen. And if the process you're using is not sufficiently motivational, rewarding or advantageous, you'll struggle to teach the dog anything. Creating engagement through motivation is the surest way to teach the dog that focus and paying attention to you, the owner, will always be an advantage. Running through some simple previously taught drills prior to teaching the dog something new will ensure that both you and your dog are in the right frame of mind to learn. The simplest way to persuade a dog to pay attention to you is with food. This food has to be of high value not simply a pocket full of dry biscuits. The food has to be moist and easy to consume. The quicker the dog can consume it, the quicker the dog is ready for another reward. Your job is to find the most appropriate soft, moist food reward to ensure your dog's focus and attention. Here I'm teaching Indy how to walk in position on my left hand side by using food to create and maintain the behavior I want. By positioning him against a wall, this prevents him from moving out to his left and he learns that the best position to be in is on my left hand side with his head level with my left knee. By not giving him the reward if he's too far in front or too far behind, I can control and maintain his position.
In our mind, we can't understand why a dog pulls on the lead. To us, it's counterintuitive. It can't be comfortable for the dog. We think it's incredibly painful. So why do they do it? Well, frankly, dogs aren't stupid. And if it was as uncomfortable or as painful as we think, they wouldn't do it. However, that's not to say that at some point in the future, the dog could not develop some physiological problems associated with these actions. They don't understand that it's not in their best interest to pull, so we have to teach them a behavior that is in their best interest. Here, I'm slowly applying back pressure onto Indy's lead until he takes a step backwards. When he takes a step backwards, he gets a food reward. This is teaching him how to release the pressure on the lead. But remember, this action is not in his normal repertoire and has to be consistently taught. Once we taught all the individual elements associated with this process, then we have to put them together to achieve the required result. We taught Indy how to engage and focus on food to teach him the best place for him to be is walking by my side. Then we applied pressure to Indy's lead, teaching him that when the lead tightened on his neck and if he took a step backwards, he would receive a food reward. Once we achieve this, we then start to, to apply exactly the same principles to Indy whilst he's off the lead. Walking by my side equals food reward. Walking forwards and then backwards equals food rewards. Now this process would not have worked if Indy was not motivated to engage and he wasn't motivated by food. Ending the training session by reverting to low level frequently practiced controls which are highly motivational for your dog will end the session on a high and reinforce your position with your dog which should simply be you do something for me and I'll do something for you. Now let's have a look at some school members who are putting their dogs through the same process. <laughs> 